um, should we dive into this? I think we're all here. Yeah. We've got, let's do it. Uh, well, I can just jump in. Um, yeah. So uh, I will just jump in. I am here at the Web Summit. Um, so if I get caught up, then then I will suddenly sound like Roland or Santi. Um, but uh, there are, this is, you know, 70,000 people in, uh, uh, in, in Lisbon talking about Web2. And, and today was a very large, you know, Web3 crypto blockchain track. Um, and I'm here because tomorrow I am uh, on stage with Brendan Eich, the creator of JavaScript, because as you may not have noticed, oh, no, you probably did. We launched a, you know, the, the first chain that allows programming smart contracts in hardened JavaScript. Um, so that is just a wonderful thing that we have been working on for, well, depending on how you count, four years or a couple of decades. Um, at the at Cosmoverse, I pointed at um, uh, Mark Miller's paper, our chief scientist paper, on distributed or uh, electronic rights uh, in distributed JavaScript. I'm mangling the title here. I apologize, but but the 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 core ideas there of you know, smart contract is written in JavaScript. If you have the following security elements allow you to do encapsulated safe execution of, of arbitrary JavaScript from arbitrary parties, and here's how you do it distributed across multiple machines, or in our case, multiple chains. And that led both to laying out what we needed to drive into JavaScript over the years into the standard, and also inspiring uh, IBC. Um, and so uh, last week, launching the chain in its you know, initial mainnet one uh, configuration focused on a particular DAP, which we'll talk about. But that really is the culmination of years of work to be able to safely and deterministically run arbitrary third-party JavaScript. And now, you know, there's still multiple phases of that rollout, but that is just a, that is just a wonderful place to be. It's a, it's a big step forward in the platform that, you know, that, that this ecosystem has been uh, um, uh, rallying around and uh, what you all put your time, energy, money, technology, and everything else into. So thank all of you for your, for your contributions across the years for that. Um, you know, this is, this is, as I said, the first step forward on, uh, you know, the first big uh, uh, launch of that. Um, and, and we're just all really, really excited. Um, I do want to call out, especially, um, you know, last week, oh, someone jumping in there? <laughs> ah, I do want to call out, especially last week, um, uh, the, you know, w w the, and, and, and the couple weeks before, you know, all the way back through July when we were um, sorting out some chain issues, the validators really stepped up, right? So, so um, uh, they, they, you know, they brought, you know, they, 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 they helped get the proposal to launch this thing funded. They looked at it. Um, uh, they tested it. They put the play test networks. They worked together on these things. And, um, and they, they, they launched this chain that, uh, that is the platform we've been wanting for years. Um, and so, uh, so I'm really excited and I really wanted to thank the validators for that. Um, uh, and so, uh, the, uh, I mentioned the, so, so thank you all and everyone. Yay! If you can imagine my normal level of talking energy when this first happened, I was running around like Kermit waving his arms in the air. <laughs> so, um, so there's an image for you. Um, so a couple other things to do, and then I think I'm getting kicked out of my spaces. Um, so uh, uh, the first app, as you know, is the Inter Protocol, um, and and that too launched on it. There will be an Inter Protocol community call to talk a lot more about that, but we're really excited about how quickly that launched. It's in the uh, soft rollout, and there will be an um, uh, uh, increase in the minting limits and incentivization and, and more integration with other chains and all that stuff happening over the next week. Um, so we're very excited about that, and, and, and others will have a lot more to say about that. Another important event this week um, uh, that I will rush through before they throw me out um, is the 11.1 unlock. So one of the things that happens with, with any of these chains that have tokens is, you know, they have a locking schedule. And when we, when we gave tokens to investors, when we gave them to validators, when we gave them to token purchasers in the public sale, when we gave them to employees, when we gave them to everyone, all of those tokens were under a lockup that, uh, that was related to the launch of mainnet zero, right? the launch of the initial chain. So the first thing to do is to note that, that the launch of the chain was a year ago as of yesterday, right? Or today the third, second or third? No, a year ago as of November 1st, right? 
huge, huge uh, uh, win to get the the Cosmo stack launch in the chain. That got the 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 the, the ticker going on on everyone's release clock. And we had seen um, many uh, chains that were that had multiple releases, multiple unlocks. Some people getting tokens more others, and a whole bunch of things like that. In this case, with the one exception of the early option one. Uh, 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 purchasers um, via coin list, everyone's tokens unlock at the same time, and everyone who has unlocks still has more tokens that will unlock over time. So November 1 was a large unlock. We went from 45 million circulating supply to 270 or so million circulating supply. Now, most of those are not on the market. Most people are uh, realize that this is a long-term play, and we just uh, launched and um, uh, and they're excited about the long-term value and 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 utility of the of the uh, JavaScript smart contracts and the platform we're building and ISK and everything else. But nonetheless, circulating supply hit you know uh, jumped up yesterday, um, and you know uh, 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 and uh, I think the philosophy there was you know rip the bandaid off and get it going so that we can focus on software. And Agoric, the company, gets to focus on software. We'll focus on, you know, integrating the pieces that other people are building, like new versions of Modable and the Oracle network from Simply Staking and others, and data layer that P2P is P2P validator is working on, and so forth. Um, and then I have uh, Rick Shreves, if you want to join me. Uh, Rick, Rick, as you know, runs the DCF Foundation, which is uh, driving uh, 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 governance and other things for the Agoric. Uh, and build and ISP network. So, uh, hello, Rick. Hey, Dean. Thanks. Thanks a lot for inviting me to the call, and uh, and congrats to everybody on the Agoric team for getting this done. This is just huge, and just the amount of momentum that has come from the events across the last week is really inspiring. Um, you know, for those of you in the audience who are wondering, you know, why Dean was sort of skirting around talking about price and things like that, well, that's that's because of regulatory issues and legal issues and lawyers, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, don't expect that sort of info to come out of these calls. Uh, I would encourage you that if you have interest in such topics, that uh, we've got discourse up, and it's community.agoric.com. So community.agoric.com. If you go there, you'll find a, a number of, of forum posts that are discussing a variety of topics, including the unlock. And that's a good place for you to engage and talk about these things. And, and if you're also looking for resources uh, you know, which exchanges are there, which custody providers are available, is there OTC action, et cetera. Uh, DCF put together a resources page in GitHub that you can visit. Uh, and on GitHub, we are DC Foundation. That's our username. And there's simply a resources repository in there that lists out build uh, ecosystem services. And we'll be building that out over time uh, with other things for IST, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, if you've got something that you want to add to that, just drop a pull request in there and we'll make that happen for you as well. So uh, all these things are sort of coming together right now. It's good to see the discourse up and running. Of course, everybody's probably aware we have a Commonwealth as well. We're using that Commonwealth really more as a voting booth and the discourse as you know, a community engagement and discussion forum. Uh, there's also an increasing amount of content in the discourse course as well, whether it's FAQs or other bits of information. Uh, so we're really trying to build that up for the community right now. And of course, we're always on Discord and you can find us there all the time. And we've been active there both uh, as Agoric and as Inter Protocol for quite some time now. So jump on in and get involved. And another reason why I'd kind of point, point you in that direction and push you to get involved is DCF is about to start our strategic planning for the next year. Uh, and in the course of that, we are going to be reaching out to the community and asking for feedback and input on things as we determine how to prioritize what programs we want to launch to help build out ecosystem uh, uh, around Agoric, IST, and related services, even the hardened JavaScript world for that matter. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm looking forward to that because it's really going to be sort of the distinguishing factor that makes DCF different from a lot of the other foundations that are in this space and, and carves out a unique place for us that I think is going to benefit the entire sort of Cosmos IBC world and even beyond that. Um, and then one last thing, and then I'll, I'll hand it over to Roland. So Roland, get ready. Um, 
You uh, may be aware that we launched the Economic Committee. Uh, the Economic Committee was put in by Community Governance recently to help govern uh, the Inter Protocol. Uh, they are up and running and functioning now and have had their first meetings. Uh, they handled the rollout of the minting limits for IST, uh, and I believe they're meeting later on today as well uh, to discuss revising those in light of the you know really great uptake we had when IST hit the marketplace. Uh, so be expecting to see updates from that in the uh, inter-protocol community meeting as well. But I just wanted to flag that as something that is an important accomplishment for the uh, community as a whole and is super important for uh, someone having their hand on the tiller uh, for IST and making sure that it lives up to its potential. Um, I think that's pretty much all I've got for this group today. Happy to take questions, of course, but I think now probably Roland, sir, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Rick. Uh, so, wow, this has been a pretty crazy week. I want to uh, echo Dean's sentiments around just the the, the upgrade, uh, how the validators came together to coordinate. That it was a you know having having validator post the the proposal, the uptake on voting uh, because of the timing of the upgrade. It was uh, sort of good for East Coast, and I got to sort of sit in and, and watch everybody upgrade, uh, coordinated you know on on our side, and you know seeing the the discord screen share which is just I, I don't know after having worked worked on this for two years it was just so cool uh to be part of that um <laughs> I, I and, and, add, can you hear me i wanted to add yeah, that i started going okay the updates about to happen let me go you know splash water on my face to wake up on east coast time by the time i came back it was over it was like nine minutes they just did this amazing job partly because they had rehearsed it you know and this was an upgrade from sort of base cosmos to running the whole javascript stack agoric vm zoe and some smart contracts so so that was just that just blew me away yeah, and and you know, I I think we were sort of expecting certain timelines based on testing and all that, and you know, the the fact that it worked so fast was because people were ready, people were excited, uh, and so that was just really great to see. Um, so I I guess you know from from my side, uh, there's there's sort of a lot to talk about, but you know, I, I think I'll, I'll keep this constrained to a few specific things. So uh, first, Rick Rick mentioned the Economic Committee uh, meeting last week, getting organized and um, sort of voting on minting limits for inter-protocol. And, and I think the theme of what I want to talk about is inter-protocol as an example of the Agoric platform and as something that uh, developers can look to as they start to, to build their own systems. And really, the, the vote from the Econ Committee uh, was using the governance code that is available to any developer that wants to build on Agoric um, that, you know, the econ committee was elected through a, a vote of build holders. And so there are specific accounts connected to the econ committee that can vote on proposals that they create themselves that all live in the JavaScript level, you know, that, that doesn't come down into the Cosmos side of things. It's all Agoric platform and reaches directly into the contract to make parameter changes, right? And so these kinds of arbitrary, like arbitrary governance can get build, built by you as you're looking to uh, roll out your own protocols. And so, you know, that's something that you know, we've built enough for the econ committee to, to work and you could do a similar model as you start to look at additional governance models you might be interested in. That's something that uh, can get expanded in the platform and just seeing that work has been really cool. And it's sort of an example of really what we were hoping to drive with inter-protocol in general, which is a, a sort of specific use case of the platform that not only stresses certain parts of things that we need to build and launch, but also allows us to prioritize and get the platform out there. So there's a whole lot on the Agoric platform that we still need to build. There's the execution fee model in JavaScript. Uh, there's, you know, upgrade. There's, you know, I, I could probably list things for, for 10 straight minutes, but what Interprotocol let us do was to say, actually, we only really need these things to go live with something. And so that's, that's sort of how we approach the launch. And um, let me it, inject it's been... something there real quick. The, many of the things you, you mentioned, we've actually built. We just wanted to have a narrow platform and have not tested. Just so, just so people know, it's not like we're starting from scratch on all those. There's a lot of that stuff that is, that is baked and gone through some amount of testing or security audits or what have you. It just didn't need to be included, so it made sense to not include it in that initial launch. And there's still things to build, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, and, and right. I don't mean to imply that we we haven't started on them, but at the same time, um, it, it did let us go live with something specific to uh, to 
to, to launch the platform. And so that's how we are going to be approaching future releases too. So as we, as, as mainnet one has gone live, we can now start looking towards mainnet two and, and start understanding what it will take to get um, the partners that we announced that we've announced live on the platform as soon as possible, um, what it will take to get the next uh, inter protocol related release out. And, and that's sort of where we're focused from the product side. Um, so I, I guess with that, you know, I, I, we also have a, a metrics dashboard. You know, one, one of the other things that InterProtocol let us do was to see what it means to have a live, um, you know, something trading in the Cosmos ecosystem, something that can move across IBC. Um, and so, you know, we so far we've seen, let me uh, pull up our dashboard here. You know, we've had 160 smart wallets provisioned during this in initial InterProtocol phase. We, we sort of expected that to be about... Uh, I was expecting less than 100, uh, and, and really we hit the mint limits on the first day. Um, we also have seen 123,000 IST move across IBC, um, largely to Osmosis, where I think there are some pools trading right now. Um, we, we've been able to sort of pull up a dashboard with a, a whole bunch of details on how the system is operating. And that also gives us really critical detail for, you know, how to keep working on uh, the kernel side of things as we as we evolve. Um, so I think I've, I've sort of run over my time here, but I just, you know, I, from my side, it really is the, the, the launch of this user facing application has given us what we need to, to really drive the platform forward. And, and uh, just so excited to see all of this working together, you know, to see the launch really go effectively, at least so far, fingers crossed without a hitch. Uh, and so that's been really, really amazing. Um, so I guess with that, I'm going to turn it, turn it over to Jeet, um, who I know wants to talk about uh, delegation program updates. Thank you so much, Roland. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, just to reiterate what Dean and Roland have already mentioned, um, you know, it's been amazing to see what's happened with the mainnet one upgrade. And thank you for everyone involved in that. Uh, most importantly, our validators, um, as well as uh, Jesse, our head of security, who helped um, manage a, a lot of the upgrades as well. Um, so we have the second phase of the Agoric uh, validator delegation program coming up soon here. And the second phase is going to focus on participants who were part of the first phase. Um, and the main focus there being the uh, upgrade of key management systems and security um, for existing validators. So we'll have the delegations of this going out within the next few weeks here. And uh, thanks again for everyone participating. And if anyone has any questions about the program, uh, please reach out to me um, on Discord. I'm just looking up, I'm Jeet on the Agoric uh, Discord server. And with that, uh, thanks again, everyone. And Santi, I'll turn it over to you. Cool. All right, awesome, thank you. So, uh, can you guys hear me loud and clear? My speakers have been funky. I hear you. Okay. And I'm at Web Summit. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Yeah. So, I just want to take a quick second to, to introduce, uh, you know, quickly just a shout out to some of the new members on Agoric because we don't get to do that often, and we actually have a handful of them uh, who joined recently. So, uh, Mark, you know, who's our new programming writer, uh, Raphael, who Joined as a security engineer. Um, we have Ivan, who's now uh, VP of engineering, and Hannah, who joined, I think, last week, end of last week, uh, as a DeFi partner advocate. So, yeah, a uh, quick little round of applause. We're very excited to have him on the team. Uh, yeah, so upcoming events. Obviously, Dean has covered Web Summit pretty extensively. Um, we actually have uh, an MIT blockchain meetup in Boston happening on October 14th. So, if you live in Boston or are close to Boston, uh, we definitely uh, uh, invite you to stop by, um, and then we're also looking for some other uh, some of the bigger bigger things happening uh, uh, in 2023. So a lot of plans for that. Um, a lot of I think more virtual spaces we'll be having with Agoric in the coming month as well. So definitely take a leg out for that. Um, and yeah, so MIT Blockchain Week. That's actually November 14th. October is in the past at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah. Definitely stop by for that. Um, and then I think that's all I had. Quick little quick little announcement. So anything else uh, anyone wants to add before we kind of end the call? Well, I will add the uh, uh, the, the site that uh, Roland mentioned where we've got analytics up is analytics.inter.trade. 
and that'll take you to a Datadog site that shows some of those analytics. Those are the same analytics that that uh, the Econ Committee is using for for you know tracking and responding and figuring things out. So so that will enhance, gradually enhance over time, as well as other people will be adding their own uh, other analytics sites. But but just having something to start from is really nice. Yep. So la- yep. 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 Yeah. The last oh, thing I will add is there's a few coinless purchasers out there that didn't get their uh, uh, tokens yet because uh, they got dropped out because of duplicate addresses, and they'll get their tokens soon. So just uh, uh, shout out to you. Uh, apology for the delay, and they're coming your way. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Dean. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that about sums it up. Thank you, everybody. Uh... And now I'm going to go run around like Kermit waving his hands at Web Summit because we shipped. Oh my God, we had a launch chain. <laughs> Wait, Dean, Dean, what, what time script. is your talk? What time is your talk? My talk is at noon Lisbon time tomorrow with uh, with Brendan Ike, and we're talking about decentralizing the economy. So it'll be pretty high level for a lot of people here that um, uh, uh, that are you know that, that are just hearing about web three or don't quite know how it might apply to them or that kind of thing so um it will be uh yes it'll be it'll be high level but interesting and and, you know it's a conversation so so there's a lot of things that uh brendan and i agree on and we've you know worked with each other in some capacity for 15 years um and uh uh and so you know we have we, we, we so so and now we get to catch up because you know both he's been busy with brave and and to a lesser extent javascript now and we've been busy with agoric and to a lesser extent javascript so so it'll be fun to talk to him hey dean oh, is uh, yeah. is that going to be broadcast or is it going to be available as a recording after the fact i believe so yes yeah and and but i admit i believe so i will i will follow up and find out um the the other thing that I, that i will mention you know i'm reminded following up on the coinless thing is for coinless stuff Talk to Coinless support, not Agoric. I was just mentioning to people who might not, have, who might know they're in that state. You know, you don't need to bug them. You don't need to bug us, or at least for a week, um, and we will get you your tokens. Um, so we just wanted to let them know that that'll be that, that that distribution will be happening. Any other issue? Talk to Coinless. Um, so yeah, yeah, the 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 web summit is happening. There's a lot of crypto here. Um, I've talked to you know, seen CZ around a couple of times. We've got um, uh, various chains talking. We've got you know. Fiat onboarding, fiat offboarding, people interested in Cosmos, people doing new interesting stuff. Um, it'll, it'll be fun to see what comes out of this conference. Yeah, and I'll, I'll double check on the uh, the streaming for Web Summit. I can, I can check that today. Thank you all for your time. Thank you all for your help. Thank you all for making the beginnings of, of you know, making this uh, the, sort of the first step of this vision rolling out. Um, and for all the future contributions that you'll make to uh, make the broader vision happen. I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you, <Dean. laughs> Thank you. Yeah, good times. Thanks for all that, G. Rick, everybody. Yeah, everybody have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.